it is believed that the Mysore royal family has been haunted by a curse for more than 400 years. Does this curse have anything to do with the Maharajas of Mysore not having an heir? How come town called Talakad with fertile soil in Karnataka suddenly surrounded by sand and became a desert? Why did a village in Karnataka called Malangi suddenly became a whirlpool? Who was Alamelama and what was her curse? This video is all about a terrible curse that is told in the legend. Before that, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe as we are going to see many interesting informations in the upcoming videos. Welcome to History Talks. The Kingdom of Mysore was a significant empire in South India, believed to be founded in 1399. The Vadia dynasty was established in 1399 by Yaduraya Vadayar. He ruled Mysore under the Vijayanagara Empire until 1423. After his death, the Mysore Kingdom continued to prosper by his successors. After the downfall of the Vijayanagara Empire in 1565, the Kingdom of Mysore became independent until 1799. Maharani Lakshmi Ammani Devi, the Rajamata of Vadaya dynasty, was awaiting a chance to unseat Tipu Sultan of Mysore and hand over the kingdom back to the Vadayas. When Tipu Sultan died at the hands of the British in 1799, she discussed with the British about the handover of the Mysore throne because during that period the region of Mysore came under control of the British Empire. That finally led to the installation of her five-year-old grandson Krishna Raja Vadayar III as the Maharaja of Mysore. But in 1831, the British dethroned Krishna Raja Vadayar III, reasons being given that he was incompetent to be administrating the kingdom. The Vadayar tried too hard to persuade them to get his throne back, but all his efforts were in vain. He was told to retire and also that he will be paid 1 lakh rupees annually as pension, while the British appointed commissioners were in charge of the kingdom. In the meantime, Lord Dalhousie became the Governor General of India and introduced a policy called Doctrine of Lapse in 1848. According to this policy, if an Indian ruler died without a male heir, his kingdom would lapse and automatically become part of the East India Company's territories. The doctrine was also applied in cases where the ruler was judged to be unfit to rule. It roughly stated that any kingdom with poor administration or without a male child would be seized by the British. Unfortunately, this policy was implemented in Mysore because the Maharaja of Mysore, Krishna Raja Vadiyar, did not have an heir for the throne. This act upsets Maharaja as he had already lost the authority to administrate the kingdom. He desperately wanted to save it for the upcoming successors. Realizing his kingdom was slipping away from his hands, Mummari Krishna Raja Vadiyar reveals something terrible. Now the story goes back to the 16th century. In 1610, the king Tirmalaraya, the ruler of Sri Rangapatna and an heir of Vijayanagara kingdom, had an untreatable disease and had gone on a pilgrimage to a temple of Talakad, a town 60 kilometers from Sri Rangapatna, to pray for his recovery. But the king did not get better. While the king was away, his second wife, Queen Alamelama, known as very talented and beautiful, was managing the kingdom. The queen soon hears that the king was dying. She quickly decides to rush to Talakad, leaving behind the kingdom in the care of Raja Vadiyar, Raja Vadiyar, the Maharaja of Mysore. The evil Raja Vadiyar, being an opportunist, occupies the kingdom which he had always planned on doing. King Tirumalaraya also died and Alamelama became a widow. It was believed that the Queen Alamelama had many jewels with her and after the death of her beloved husband, she decided not to wear that anymore. So she used to send all her jewels to the Sri Rangapatna temple twice in a week. 
after adorning the goddesses Sri Ranganayagi, the jewels were returned to Alamelamma. Now, the Mysore's rule was with Raja Varyar and the priest of the temple requested the king to give them the custody of the Alamelamma's jewels. So, Raja Varyar decided to possess the jewels that were the property of Rani given for adorning the goddesses of Sri Rangapatna. On knowing that, the queen takes all the jewels to protect them and to put them in a safe place as they were holy. Thus the king, being unable to obtain the jewels and was eager to seize them at any cost, sent an army of soldiers to find her and the jewels. She managed to escape for a while, but eventually she realizes that she alone could not anymore handle the army pursuing her. Understanding that the end was near, she climbs up a cliff below which the Kaveri was flowing and then decides to die by jumping into the Kaveri river with the temple's jewels because she believed her honor was much more important than her life. But only after uttering the curse, she folded her hands and prayed to Lord Venkateshwara and said, If I have been a sincere devotee to you and a faithful wife of my husband, grant me this dying wish that would be a curse for the evil king. Then utters, Talakadu Maralagali, Malangi Maduagali, Mysura Arasarige Makalagadu Hogali, in the local dialect Kannada, which translates to Let Talakadu be a barren land, let Malangi become a whirlpool, let Mysore kings fail to get air for eternity. The curse did not just remain as mere words, but in reality, all of it has come true. Talakad, once a fertile land, surrounded with rivers, now is a barren land with sand everywhere, still burying 30 and more temples in layers and layers of sand. The river Kaveri often changed its courses, causing deadly whirlpools in Malangi, the place where she jumped. And lastly, the Mysore royal family never had an heir and was most often obligated to coronate an adopted heir. Even the last king died without leaving behind a son. This is why Mumari Krishnaraja Varyar, in the time of his rule, did not have a male child because of this curse. And also, as he had friendly relationship with the British, he saved his kingdom from being annexed. Even after his death, there were no natural heir to bear the legacy of Mysore, but only the adopted. Alame Lama was a miserable woman who just wished to see her dying husband. But the king, who desired her and the jewels, even after getting a kingdom, had left her no choices but to die to protect her honor. As they say, there is nothing more dangerous than a heartbroken woman with a strong will. This story stands true to the above words. Saddened to know that Alamelama committed suicide, Raja Vadiyar started worshipping a gold statue of her in Mysore Palace. Even after 400 years, the curse is still there. Even now, the statue of Alamelama can be seen in the Mysore Palace and there are pujas going on for her. After 400 years, the present Mysore king Yaduvir Krishnadatta Chamaraja Vadiyar and her wife Trishita Kumari gave birth to a son in 2017. But we have to note that the present king was adopted and so he is having an heir. How can we believe that all this happened because of a curse? It is hard to believe, right? So here comes some of the logical explanations. In 1336, Madhava Mantri, a minister from Vijayanagara Empire, built a dam across the river just above Talakad. This dam is likely to dry up the river path, exposing the sand banks of the river. And Talakar receives strong winds from the northwest and the southwest, which could move sand particles towards Talakar. Thus, the sand covering the town of Talakar is a consequence of the movement of particles from the river. And over the 18th century, the city was slowly abandoned by its residents due to accumulation of sand. Then in Malangi, the geologist found that the river takes a sharp turn and the water is quite deep, resulting in the vigorous torrents and formation of whirlpools. The first two could be geological reasons. But how will we give the logical explanation for the third one? 
as there is a lack of air in the royal family of Mysore. Well, that may be because of genetics. Varayars marry within their community. This may create inbreeding depression. And so, adopted rulers had heirs, but their second generation did not. So, it is up to you to believe Alamelama's curse or to think it was just a story created by Krishna Raja Varayar to save his throne from British. If you like to know this story in Tamil, please visit Marma Marivum YouTube channel. Do like and subscribe for more such videos. Thank you.